Once upon a time in a beautiful village where the sun always smiled and people laughed a lot, there lived a kind king named Zulu. He was like a big warm hug for the whole village. King Zulu loved his people and he showed it in a special way. Every year you see in this village, everyone helped to grow food on a big farm owned by the king. They grew yams, corn and lots of fruits. And when it was time to harvest, King Zulu did something amazing. He would share all the food from the farm with the villagers. Yes, everyone got a piece of the farm's bounty, making sure no one was hungry. This made the villagers love King Zulu even more. They respected him a lot because he was generous and always thought about their well-being. But in this beautiful village, there was also Prince T, the king's son. Prince T was very different from his father. He was handsome, but he was not as kind. People called him the shameless prince. Imagine someone walking around acting like he made the sunrise and the birds sing, not listening to anyone, especially the older people. That was Tali. He liked to remind everyone that he would be king one day, and sometimes he didn't behave nicely. He would go to where people drank palm wine, tell everyone to leave, drink as much wine as he wanted, and then not even pay a single coin to the seller. The palm wine seller, a kind man who worked hard every day, could only watch as Prince Tali drank away his efforts. This wasn't a one-time thing. Prince Tali did stuff like this a lot. He'd go to the market, grab whatever he fancied and say, I'm the future king, so it's mine. The villagers were upset but felt powerless. They knew complaining to King Zulu was their only hope. So they went to the king one by one with stories of Prince T's doings. King Zulu listened with a heavy heart each time. He apologized and tried to make things right. He gave out more crops or money saying, I'm sorry, please understand. It was clear that King Zulu was troubled by his son's behavior, but he loved him too much to be harsh. The villagers appreciated the king's kindness, but they also wished Prince Tali would learn to be more like his father. King Zulu knew this too and hoped that one day Prince Tali would understand the true meaning of being a leader. As the sun set on the village, life went on, but the shadow of the prince's actions loomed large, hinting at challenges to come. The villagers hoped for a change, a day when Prince Tali would see the light of kindness and generosity, just like his father, King Zulu. One bright morning, with the sun kissing the earth, King Zulu called a big meeting at the royal palace. Everyone important in the village was there, including the wise council of elders, who had long beards and kind eyes. They all gathered around, curious about the king's sudden call. King Zulu stood up, his voice steady and clear. My dear friends, he began, I must travel to a far land across the great rivers and mountains. I will be gone for three moons. During this time, my son Prince Tali will take care of our village. He will be in charge. A wave of whispers spread through the room. The elders, who were wise like owls, felt a storm coming. They whispered among themselves, Oh no, that's not good. Tali, really? They knew Tali loved himself a little too much and didn't listen to anyone. But the king had made up his mind and no one could change it. As soon as King Zulu left, Prince Tali wasted no time. He stood tall and announced, I am your leader now. But instead of wisdom and kindness, he ruled with arrogance. He sent the elders away from the palace, saying, I don't need old advice. Prince Tali was making everyone's day really, really hard. He was so naughty, they'd ride on people's backs just for fun, like they were horses. He would go to the market and take whatever caught his eye. No please, no thank you, nothing, leaving the sellers in tears. And the most shocking of all, he pointed at any girl he fancied, demanding she come to the palace. If anyone dared to speak up, he would order his guards to beat them up. The villagers were scared and angry, but they felt helpless. Who could stand up to the prince? The elders tried to reason with him, reminding him of his father's ways, but Prince Tali wouldn't listen. He laughed at them, saying, I am the future king, my word is law. As the days passed, the village, once full of joy and laughter, grew quiet under Prince Tali's rule. The people missed King Zulu deeply, hoping for his quick return. They longed for the days of fairness and kindness, wondering how long they would have to endure Prince T's misrule. There was this very old woman in the village, wise and kind, who went to Tali and said, Listen, young man, if you don't let anyone talk to you, you're going to trip and fall hard. 
But did Tali listen? Nope. He just kept doing his thing, thinking he was the tallest tree in the forest. But he would soon realise that even the tallest trees can be shaken by the wind. In the heart of our village lived Lala, a farmer known far and wide for his big farm of corn and yams, and for something even more special, his beautiful twin daughters. These twins were like two peas in a pod, yet each shone in her own way. Their laughter was like music, and their kindness like a warm breeze. Everyone in the village adored them, and many dreamed of winning their hearts. One sunny day, as Prince T roamed the village on his usual rounds of mischief, his eyes fell upon Lala's daughters walking in their father's farm. Their beauty struck him like a lightning bolt. He had seen them before, but today he decided I must have them both as my wives. So Prince T, with all the subtlety of a charging bull, approached Lala. I, your prince, have chosen your daughters to be my brides, he declared, as if he was bestowing an honour. Lala's heart sank. This was not the honour Prince Tali believed it to be. It was a command, one that carried the weight of a threat. In the village, it was unheard of for one man to marry two sisters, let alone when the girls were too young and not ready for marriage. But how could Lala say no to the prince? The fear of what Prince T could do to his family and his farm weighed heavily on him. With a heavy heart, Lala nodded in agreement, his words stuck in his throat. The twins, standing by their father, were shocked. They knew of Prince Tali's reputation, and the thought of being married to him filled them with dread. As word of Prince Tali's audacious decision spread like wildfire through the village, a palpable tension hung in the air, thick with disapproval and simmering resentment. Whispers of discontent echoed through the winding streets, weaving their way into the fabric of everyday life like an ominous undercurrent threatening to disrupt the fragile peace. How shameful! Two sisters, this is too much! The murmurs grew louder, echoing the collective outrage of the villagers as they grappled with the sheer audacity of the prince's decree. Yet, despite their growing displeasure, a pervasive fear gripped their hearts, shackling their tongues and binding their dissent. In the midst of this turmoil, the twins remained steadfast, their resolve unyielding despite the storm brewing around them. Standing tall amidst the swirling currents of public opinion, they exchanged knowing glances and shared a silent understanding. Behind their serene facade, however, a quiet determination flickered in their eyes, hinting at the clandestine plan taking shape within their hearts. Whispering conspiratorially to each other, their lips curved into secretive smiles. The twins harboured a hidden agenda, a cunning scheme designed to thwart the prince's unchecked arrogance and teach him a lesson he would not soon forget. With each whispered exchange, their plan took root, growing stronger and more resolute with every passing moment. For the twins knew that Prince Tali could not continue to wield his power with impunity, taking whatever or whomever he desired without facing the consequences of his actions. And so, with steely resolve and unwavering determination, they set out to orchestrate a series of events that would challenge the prince's sense of entitlement and force him to confront the repercussions of his reckless behaviour. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the village square, the twins retreated to the sanctuary of their humble abode, their hearts pounding with excitement and trepidation. Behind closed doors, they huddled together in the dim light of flickering candles, their faces illuminated by the glow of anticipation. With each whispered word and shared glance, their plan took shape, evolving into an intricate tapestry of subterfuge and stratagem designed to ensnare Prince Tali in his own web of deceit. They knew that their actions would have far-reaching consequences, not only for the prince but for the entire village as they sought to topple the oppressive regime of entitlement and arrogance that had long plagued their community. Drawing on their innate cunning and resourcefulness, the twins meticulously orchestrated every detail of their scheme, leaving no stone unturned in their quest for justice and redemption. From covert meetings under the cover of darkness to clandestine exchanges with trusted alleys, they navigated the intricate labyrinth of Palaisa Intrigue with skill and precision, always one step ahead of their unwitting adversary. But as their plan began to unfold, a sense of unisa settled over the village like a shroud as whispers of dissent grew louder and bolder with each passing day. The air crackled with anticipation, tinged with a palpable sense of foreboding, 
as the villagers braced themselves for the inevitable confrontation that loomed on the horizon. Meanwhile, Prince Tali remained blissfully unaware of the storm gathering around him, his mind preoccupied with thoughts of power and privilege. Oblivious to the machinations of his enemies, he strutted through the palace halls with all the arrogance of a peacock, confident in his invincibility and blind to the looming threat on the horizon. But little did he know that his downfall was imminent, as the twins closed in on their prey with ruthless determination, their hearts aflame with righteous fury and their minds ablaze with the fire of rebellion. With each passing moment, their resolve grew stronger, fueled by the burning desire to see justice served and the tyrant prince brought to his knees. And so, as the stage was set for the final act in their grand drama, the twins stood poised on the brink of destiny, their hearts heavy with the weight of responsibility and their souls ablaze with the fire of revolution. For in the game of power and deception, it was not the mighty who would prevail, but those cunning enough to outwit their adversaries and emerge victorious against all odds. The village watched, holding its breath as Lala's daughters walked towards the prince's palace. This was more than just a marriage. It was a turning point, one that would challenge Prince Tali in ways he never expected. Inside the grand walls of the royal palace, Prince T was buzzing with pride. He had brought the twins home, ready to show them off as his newest treasures. But the twins, they had a different story in mind. They weren't going to let Prince T parade them around without a fight. They were clever, full of spirit, and they had a plan. The twins started by being politely disobedient. They would smile sweetly at Prince T's orders and then do just the opposite. If he asked for water, they'd bring him a leaf. If he wanted silence, they'd laugh and sing. Prince, used to getting his way, was baffled. He couldn't understand why he couldn't control them. Then came the day of the big feast. Prince Tali had invited men of honour from neighbouring villages to show off his power and his beautiful new brides. The palace was buzzing with preparations, and Prince Tali was puffed up like a peacock, eager to impress. So, Prince Tali asked the twins to make the most delicious feast ever. Please, make it nice for my guests, he said, thinking they'd listen this time. But the twins, with plans to punish the prince, had a different idea. They nodded and took the money to buy food. But guess what? They bought nothing to eat and nothing to drink. The big moment came, and all the guests were sitting around, tummies rumbling, waiting for something delicious. The twins walked in with big trays and pots, and everyone's eyes got as big as moons. Here comes the feast, they thought. But surprise, the plates were as empty as a bird's nest in winter, and the pots were full of water, not the sweet palm wine everyone expected. Prince Tali, shocked, stood up to ask questions, but then splash. The twins poured the water right over his head in front of everyone. Can you imagine? There he was, all soaked and drippy, looking like a fish out of water. His guests couldn't believe their eyes. They were so shocked they could hardly speak. They got up and left, leaving Tali standing there dripping and embarrassed. Oh, how the tables had turned. The twins showed him that being mean and bossy wasn't going to make anyone respect or listen to him. Just as Prince Tali was steaming like a pot of hot soup, all angry and sending for Lala, guess who shows up? King Zulu. Yes, the king himself walks right back into the palace, his presence commanding and calm. The villagers gathered, curious and hopeful, wondering what would happen next. Prince Tali, still nursing his wounded pride, was shocked to see his father return so soon. Father, you're back early, he exclaimed, a mix of happiness and fear in his voice. King Zulu looked at his son, his face, unreadable. Then, turning to the villagers and the gathered crowd, he began to speak. My people, I left on a journey not of distance but of learning. I wanted to see how my son would rule in my absence. The air was thick with anticipation as King Zulu continued. I have watched unseen as my son chose the path of arrogance and misuse of power. This was a test, not just for Tali, but for all of us, to remind us of the values we hold dear. So, Tali's heart sank. He glanced at Lala and the twins who stood among the villagers, their dignity intact despite everything. King Zulu's voice grew firmer. Tali, you have failed to respect and serve the people you sought to rule by fear, not by love. Therefore, you will no longer be prince. 
Instead, you will serve the village to learn the humility and kindness you so lack. The village gasp then murmured in agreement. It was a fitting punishment, they thought, for someone who had misused his power so greatly. And so, Prince Tali became a servant to the village, turning to the fields, carrying water and doing all the tasks he had once thought himself above. It was hard work, but with each passing day, he learned the value of humility, kindness and respect. The twins, their spirits unbroken, continued to be adored by the village. They reminded everyone of the strength of standing up for what's right, even in the face of power. King Zulu, wise as ever, watched over his people, his heart heavy but hopeful. He knew that the lessons of these days would echo through the village for generations to come. Tali learned that being a leader isn't about telling people what to do. It's about listening, helping and caring. He found out that being truly strong means being kind and humble. No more showing off, no more taking what's not given. Now he was giving back and oh how good it felt. This tale, the one about the shameless prince, wraps up with a bow of wisdom. It tells us that no matter how young or old we are, being humble is mighty. It teaches us that power is not for making others feel small, but for lifting them up, making everything better for everyone. And that, my friends, is the true heart of a leader. I hope you enjoyed the tale. If so, please like the video, share it with your family and friends, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell for more enchanting tales like this one. Goodbye.